look at these amazing structures do you know what are they called yes they are pyramids now these conical structures were built in ancient times to preserve the dead bodies of pharaohs or egyptian kings so pyramids belong to the egyptian civilization and they are the representation of egyptian architecture and culture now this ancient civilization that is egyptian civilization flourished on the fertile plains of river nile now just like egyptian civilization other ancient civilizations of the world flourish on the fertile plains of some rivers for instance mesopotamian civilization developed on the fertile plains of tigris river again an ancient civilization of india that is the indus valley civilization developed on the fertile plains of river indus and lastly huang ho civilization an ancient chinese civilization developed on the fertile plains of river yellow also known as huang ho river so from this map we can conclude that all of the early civilizations of the world develop on the fertile plains of some rivers thus plains are the cradle of early civilization in fact they play an important role in the development of human beings well before discussing about the importance of plains let us first understand what kind of landform is a plain well a plain is an extensive area of flat land with lower elevation the elevation of plain is comparatively lower than the other two landforms that is mountains and plateaus see from this figure you can very well understand that the plains have comparatively lower elevation than the other two landforms that is plateaus and mountains the average elevation of plain is less than 150 meter now from this figure can you distinguish between all the three different types of landforms that you have studied till now well if you remember in our previous lessons we already studied about mountains and plateaus and today we studied about plains so plains as we read is an extensive area of flat land with very low elevation now coming to mountains well mountains as we know have higher elevation with a confined summit and steep slopes while plateau on the other hand have a flat top and steep edge so this is also another plateau that is placed between two mountains so these are the three different types of landforms now plains can be of various types they can be covered with grasses as in case of a grassland they can be completely dry and lack vegetation as in case of desert and they can even be covered with tall dense trees as in the case of forest so plains can be a grassland desert or forest now we should identify some of the major plains of the world so this world map shows the major plains of the world and they are the great plains of north america the amazon basin and pampas of south america sahara desert congo basin of africa steppes of eurasia central lowlands of australia and the great plains of china so these are the major plains of the world now from here if we zoom into the map of india then we shall find that india has two vast plains one in the northern part and another one along the margin of the peninsular plateau so the vast plain that is present along the margins of peninsular plateau are known as coastal plains so coastal plains simply refer to the plains that are found near the coast and the coastal plains of india is sandwiched between the peninsular plateau and the two seas that is arabian sea and bay of bengal now the coastline or the coastal plains of india is very vast with an average length of 7500 
meters. It extends from Gujarat in the west to Orissa in the east. And the total coastal plains of India can be broken into two parts. One lying in the west that is western coastal plain and another one lying to the east that is eastern coastal plains. Now I already mentioned that there is another plain present in the northern part of the country. Let's know about it. Well, the plains that is present in the northern part of the country is known as northern plains. The region is drained by three major rivers and their tributaries namely Indus, Ganga and Brahmaputra. So, the northern plains is a fertile region and it is drained by three major rivers. Therefore, the northern plains of India is also known as Indo-Gangetic Plain, where Indo stands for River Indus and Gangetic stands for River Ganga. So, Indo-Gangetic Plain refers to the northern plains of India that is drained by River Indus, Ganga and Brahmaputra. Now, a landform that is drained by major rivers and their tributaries is known as a river basin. So, the Indo-Gangetic Plain of India is a river basin. Now, let us see how is it formed. Well, the perennial rivers that is Indus, Ganga and Brahmaputra originate in the mountains. Now, when a river moves across a mountain, it erodes the landforms. Now, these eroded sediments are eventually deposited along both the sides of the river. Now, due to gradual deposition over the years, the plains extend and it forms depositional plains. So, depositional plains are formed due to deposition of sediments brought by rivers. Now, these deposited sediments are usually rich in sand, silt and clay, together known as alluvium. Now, the plains that are rich in alluvium are known as alluvial plains. Now, the major alluvial plains of the world are Great Plains, Indo-Gangetic Plains and the Jiangxi Basin of China. So, alluvial plain is a type of depositional plain that is rich in alluvium. These alluvial plains are usually formed at the base of a mountain when a river slides down the slope of a mountain and it spreads in the shape of a fan and deposits the sediments of alluvium. Therefore, this type of landform that is formed by a river is known as alluvial fan because the sediments are deposited in the shape of a fan as we can see in this picture. Now, before proceeding with our lesson, let us try to answer this objective. It says alluvial plains are formed due to accumulation of volcanic materials, folding of earth's crust, deposition of alluvium or erosional work of wind. Well, which of these options do you think is the correct one? Well, if you remember, we just discussed that alluvial plain is a type of depositional plain that is formed due to deposition of alluvium brought down by rivers. So, the correct option is deposition of alluvium. Now, let us continue with our discussion. So, as discussed till now, rivers play an important role in the formation of plains. In fact, various types of plains are formed at various stages of a river. Now, the entire journey of a river can be broken down into three different stages. Upper course is the stage where a river begins and it is the first stage in the journey of a river. Upper course is followed by the second stage that is middle course. In this stage, the volume of a river increases substantially. And finally, we have the lower course that is the third stage. Here, the journey of a river comes to an end when it converges or meets with a larger water body that is a sea or an ocean. So, these are the three different stages of the entire journey of a river. 
Now, as mentioned just now, different types of plains are formed at various stages of a river, mainly in the middle and at the third stage. So, now let us look into those plains that are formed in these two stages. Now, as mentioned just now, the volume of a river increases substantially in its middle stage. Now, due to heavy rainfall, the volume increases further and the river overflows both its bank, thereby leading to floods. Now, as the river spreads over both the sides of its bank, it deposits the sediments there, thereby leading to the formation of floodplains. Therefore, floodplains are formed due to deposition of sediments by a flooded river. A classic example of floodplain is the Mississippi floodplains of North America. This plain is formed due to flooding of Mississippi River. In its lower course, the speed of a river reduces and it becomes weak. It spreads out and starts to discharge water through several channels called distributaries. Also, the river deposits sediments of silt and alluvium in between these channels and therefore a triangular shaped plain known as delta is formed. The world's largest delta is the Ganga Brahmaputra delta that is formed at the mouth of river Ganga and Brahmaputra. It spreads across two countries that is India and Bangladesh. Another name for Ganga Brahmaputra Delta that is the world's largest delta is Sundarbans. So here we have four different types of plains that we discussed till now. The first one is the coastal plains. The coastal plains as we know is found near the coast along the margins of seas or oceans. The second one is the alluvial plains. Alluvial plains are formed due to rich deposition of alluvium brought by rivers. So alluvial plain is a type of depositional plain. Next we have flood plains. Flood plains are formed at the middle course of a river when it increases in volume and overflows both its banks. And lastly, we have delta which is a triangular shaped plane formed at the mouth of a river when it meets or converges with a sea. So these are the four major types of planes. Now we shall discuss about various importance of planes. Well, at the beginning of this lesson, I mentioned that the early human civilizations of the world flourished or developed on the fertile plains. So, we can find that plains are an important and integral part of human development. So, in this context, let us discuss about various importance of plains. The first and foremost importance of plains is that agriculture, which is the primary occupation of people, is practiced on plains. This is so because plains are highly fertile as they are rich in silt and alluvium brought down by rivers. Next, here we have two maps. The first one shows the major plains of the world and the second one shows the railways of the world. Now, if we compare these two maps, then we shall find that the railway networks are well developed on planes. See, a well developed railway network is found here and this region is a plane. Again, a well connected roads and railway networks are spread in these parts which are also planes. So, by comparing these two maps, one can conclude that the soft fertile surface of plains are very important and convenient for paving roads and railways. Thus, plains help in or facilitate land transport. So, to sum up with, we can conclude that plains offer several advantages. Firstly, they have a fertile flat terrain which is very good for growing crops. Again, plains have wide supply of water because they are usually formed by rivers which drains over that region and thirdly plains also help in the development of land transport 
So due to wide availability of fertile plain, good supply of water and well connected network of roads and railways, plains are the most populated regions of the world. This is to say that most of the world's population live on plains. So plains have high population density. Well, if we look at this indicator, then we shall find that the darker shades represent high population density. That is, these regions have high population density, whereas the lower shades represent low population densities. So, these regions are sparsely populated. So, from this map, we can conclude that plains are the most populated regions of the world. So, since prehistoric times, we learned that plains play an important role in the flourishment and development of human civilization. This is because plains offer several advantages. Initially, we understood the definition of plains. Plains refer to an extensive area of flat land with lower elevation. Then, we discuss about various types of plains, namely alluvial plains, delta, flood plains and coastal plains. Then, we discuss about various importance of plains. So, that's all about today's lesson on plains. In our next lesson, we shall discuss about landforms and how it influences the lifestyle of people. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon. You can also register for free at deltastep.com or download the Delta Step app to learn one to one with our amazing teachers or to get access to our 5000 amazing videos as per your school syllabus. Master each topic with our adaptive practice technology. Get million plus questions with step by step solutions and unlimited mock tests. Get all your doubt resolved instantly. Learn via games and win amazing prizes like playstations and iPads. So at Delta Step, learning is not just fun and easy, but it's rewarding too. So register for free now.